Okay, everyone, it's been a while since I've added to this series, but someone asked if I could show how to create a skill tray, like in just basically some on-screen button. So rather than having to press the numbers on the keyboard, you could just click on the screen. Before I continue, let me just say that the so-called proper way to do it would probably be able to use would be to use the UI and create a button. And if you guys really want, I can show you that too. Honestly, I find it kind of cumbersome because you create a script, and then with that script, you have to create a function, but the function doesn't automatically work. You then have to associate that function with uh, an event. And so I find it actually takes a very simple idea and make it, makes it kind of complicated. Whereas if you create your own button, basically what you just do is you're taking a 2D image and using on mouse down, on mouse over, on mouse exit, things like that. And so it's functionality that you're much more familiar with. So if you guys want to see the so-called proper way, I could do another video that shows you how to do that. And the other reason why I don't find this to be necessary, the actual UI buttons, is because this is a 2D environment. If you want something on top, all you have to do is say it's ordering the layer. So you just put the buttons at like 10 or 20 or 50, and they will always be on top. Not to mention that you don't have the issues of a 3D camera. So with a 3D camera, yeah, you really need to do it the right way. You need to have the overlay of the UI. But when it's a 2D, not so much. So again, if you guys want to see it, I'll show you that. But um, I really think that if you're trying to do a simple project, I think this is it makes much more sense. So I imported this image. Since it's a 2D project, it defaults to Sprite, which is what we want. If we were in a 3D environment, it would default to a texture, which is not what we want. So what we can do is we can take this button and just drag it right into the environment. Can't really see it very well because it shows up dead center and so the, the image of the camera is behind it. So let's just take that and move that down dead center. And now we want to make sure it's on top of everything else, which right now it's not. So like I said, you just use whatever the highest number is going to be. So say 20. And you can just run it to make sure it's appearing. And sure enough, there it is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a component to that. We're going to add Physics 2D, and it's going to be Box Collider, and it's going to be a trigger. So what will happen is now you'll be able to click on that once you put in the code that checks for a mouse click. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to right click, create C sharp, and we'll call this buttons. Just in case you have lots of buttons and rather than writing a new script for each one, you can use the same script and just check the name of what you're clicking on. So we'll take buttons and we'll drag and drop it onto this object. Let's go ahead and open up buttons. Now, whenever you add new collision events, I think I've said this before, strongly recommend always test the collision in, of it, in and of itself before you start getting into complex functionality. So you always want to make sure that the collision or the click or the mouse over is always working before you start getting complex functionality. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. So outside of start, outside of update, we're going to do so on mouse down and there we go like i said before you get any kind of complex functionality make sure this in and itself is working so to me simplest way is just using debug.log and then click worked so as long as you don't have a bunch of other stuff spamming into your uh, your debug log, that should be sufficient. 
So we'll run it. We'll click. Click worked. Okay, so great. And if you decide that this is too small, you certainly can make the object bigger uh, several ways. You can change the size of this by changing the ratio. So right now it's pixels per unit. You would make the number smaller to actually make it bigger. Sounds contradictory, but it's a ratio, so that's why it works that way. And the other thing you can do is you can just increase the uh, increase the size of the individual object. Difference is if this is used in multiple places and you change this, every one of those instances will be increased. If you increase just this one object, the other ones will not be increased. So, uh, but we'll leave it for that size for now. So we said that the click is working. So you can either remark this out or you can just delete it. So what we want to do is we want to integrate this into both the which control and the suit control. So right now what we're saying is if this key is pressed, then we want something to happen. We want the attack to happen. So what we want to check for is we want to check for this or the button being pressed. So that means we're really going to create um, a static variable. That way it can be modified here, but be read here. So what's that static variable going to be? We can call that, so let's go to battle flow and we'll call this public static string uh, attack but pressed. Now, We'll start this off as no because it hasn't been pressed. I always get questions as to why do I use a string instead of a Boolean when I'm doing yes or no. The reason is because too often in, I think a situation is going to be just yes or no, on or off, and then it turns out that I need additional states. And because it's uh, additional states, I have to go back and recode. Whereas if I start with a string, I can just check for new values without having come back here, changing the type of, uh, of variable, and then actually checking for different values. So yes, technically I could use a Boolean for this, but again, too often I found that I need a third or a fourth state, and then the Boolean no longer works. Okay, so if this button is pressed, so, or should I say, if mouse is down, then uh, if mouse down is on, this image is working like a button. Then what we want to do is we want battle flow because that's where we declared the variable. And there it is right at the top, attack butt pressed equals Y. That's simple. If we've pressed on it, then we want that to become Y. So let's go to the witch. And now what we want to do is this is saying if this and this. Now what we want to do is we want to break this up. We want to say if this or that other variable and this other part is done. So now there's going to be a choice in here. So we need to break this one into two. So if... And the pipe, so this is the line that is above the enter key, so uh, the backslash. So you hold shift and press the backslash, and you get the pipe. Just like the ampersand, you have to do two. So or battle flow dot attack button pressed equals, whoops, double equal sign. Sorry, I always do that. Now that's closed. And now that closes the first part because if you notice, it was that extra one that I started with. 
and it's sure enough saying that that matches to it. But that means we also need to change this. So we need, uh, excuse me, we need to change this. We need this to get set back. So battle flow dot attack butt equals no. Because we don't want to spam this. We don't want this to keep being true. So that, if I haven't forgotten anything, should be all it should take to make this work. Then we have to rinse and repeat with the suit. Okay, we got an error. Did not save this, that's why I got the error. I should believe that should take care of it. There we go. So that was a little deceiving. So the file, uh, excuse me, the uh, script hadn't been saved and yet it was indeed accessing what I'd created in that. So if I click on this, she should fire. Sure enough, she did. But now this won't fire her. So since it's her churn, this is doing nothing. So what we need to do is we just have to copy that functionality into her script. So, it's a little messy because of the extra parentheses, so you're going to have to be careful about this. So again, you want to find the if where you're checking for the pressing of the button, and you're now giving it an alternative. Let's see if that's right. So this should match the middle one. Yep, that should do it. But we got to do the same thing. We need to have battle flow dot attack button pressed set to now. So they fire, they attack. They attack, they attack. So just like that, you've now added the beginning of a skill tree. Now, what you can also do is say you want the image to be specific to what they're doing. Like she has a fireball, so you might want the fireball to change. Um, she's doing a physical attack, so maybe the sword is okay. So uh, it also you'd... Presumably, people can do more than just one type of attack. They'll have multiple attacks. So you would just build this out. And I can do another video to demonstrate more, but it's just rinse and repeat. You would just, um, again, you'd create an image, add the box collider, set it as a trigger. You would add a script, and the script would say what happens when it gets clicked on. And specifically, it would be the on mouse down. So I think that's about it for now. I'll definitely do at least one more video. Maybe we'll look at on mouse over, things like that. Because maybe when you linger over this, you want a pop-up that says what it does, like um, like a tool tip that says, if it's the witch, it'll say, does 50 fire damage. If it's uh, the bodyguard, does 80 melee damage, that kind of thing. So definitely not done, but a really good start. Uh, and again, some people out there are going to say, gee, you really should use the UI. If you really want me to, I'll show you. But like I said, using the U UI isn't that big of a deal because it's a 2D environment, and you can just set this to be on the top level. Whereas in the 3D environment, camera's moving around, and you can't really do that. All right, so that should do it for now. Any questions, let me know. Like I said, I'll do a couple more videos. I'll probably add the tool tip. I'll also have the image change based on uh, whose turn it is. And then if you guys really want to, I'll show you the alternative way of using the UI buttons. But again, I think it's really overkill, and I think that it's not as intuitive as this. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. If the mouse is over it, then something happens. It can't get simpler than that. Okay, so that should do it.